welcome to Webinar Wednesday here at Lulu. Thank you to everyone who has joined us so far. And thank you, shout out especially to Kathy Brown for starting off the chat. I always brag about you guys and how you're a very talkative group. You have not uh, made me a liar yet, so I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for coming and starting the conversation. Hey, Kathy, Robin, Donna, Alan, Tabiru, Lolly, Haley, and Karen. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, let us know where you're from. Um, do you have a podcast? Are you interested in podcasting? I hope so, because that's what we're talking about today. So I will go over a few housekeeping things before we jump in. So everyone who joins today will get a recording of today's uh, webinar to the email address you registered with. We will also post it to our YouTube channel. So definitely go and subscribe so you can see when that will drop, which should be about in within 24 hours of today's presentation. Um, so drop your comments in the chat, drop your questions in the Q&A. Um, Robbie has been kind enough to answer questions for us today. So feel free to drop any questions that you have in the Q&A spot and uh, we will get to those at the end. Uh, he's a professor, so I feel like he should have really good answers to all of your questions. <laughs> so give him all the hard ones. So, <laughs> so as you can see, I am joined today by Robbie Fitzwater. We are talking about how to use a podcast to grow your audience and your business. And if you want to know a little bit about Robbie, you're in the right place because I've got his bio right here. So <laughs> Robbie is the founder of Marketing Rhythm, where he helps e-commerce businesses grow through attention and email marketing, as well as an educator at Clemson University. He has been a pioneer in the digital marketing space for the last 14 years, working with brands like Walmart, Fleet Feet, Clemson University, Gerber Children's Wear, Plus Plus, Lulu, that's us, and many more. He enjoys hanging with his family, reading and jogging in his spare time. <laughs> his love language is bad marketing analogies, and this is a first for any of our guests. No one has included this information or been brave enough. His go-to karaoke song is Midnight Train to Georgia by Gladys Knight and the Pips. And maybe if you put in the Q&A enough requests, he will sing a few bars at the end of this presentation. <laughs> all right, Robbie. Well, everyone, give a warm welcome. Give your claps, your snaps, all of your energy to Robbie, and I'll turn it over to you. Welcome to the stage, Robbie. Rock and roll. Looking forward to it. Thank you guys for having me and excited to talk shop with everyone here today. Um, see a lot of people from all over the country. So really looking forward to this and yes, may again, if you guys are really interested, we could, we could get into some, some, some karaoke at the end of this, but we'll, we'll dive in right now. Um, today diving into using a podcast to grow your audience and you guys, like Chelsea mentioned, I teach as part of my, is, is, is one of the things I do. So use the chat, any questions you guys have. As interactive as this can be, I love the conversation can go in in between. And again, you guys all see different angles of things and understand, again, podcasting and a lot of different topics from different angles. So that insight is really helpful here. So please use the chat as much as possible. But going to dive into things, planning for today being like a high level view of things, kind of the context we're in, in terms of marketing in terms of why podcasts are important in this kind of unique space we're in. Um, and then diving into kind of some nuts and bolts of how to start a podcast. What are some of the things to look for? Um, and kind of giving you guys as much perspective as possible. This is something that I've done, uh, done once or twice now, and also um, have been working in the content marketing space for a long time. So have got lots of gray hairs, have kissed a lot of frogs. So hopefully you don't have to. So we'll start, start diving in and have some fun. I start just about every presentation with this slide. I know we're talking about podcasting, but because we're humans, we've been sharing stories like this for thousands of years. This is a painting, cave painting from Lascaux, France. Basically, this is the original tweet. This is the original podcast. This is how we've been communicating and telling stories for thousands of years. And we really haven't upgraded our brains, but we've really upgraded our um, technology and how we can communicate. But at the end of the day, I always like to think, hey, we're people talking to people and a podcast is really one of the, one of the tools and channels we'll use to do that. So it's my, my default um, 
first, first slide of just about everything. One of the things we have upgraded though, as individuals and because everyone to some capacity is in marketing, um, we, we've upgraded the way we can communicate with customers and communicate with an audience. We have a distinct, a little bit better understanding of how we interact with people and the journey they go through in interacting and understanding us. So we have a reach, reaching people. This is what it's called the race framework. I like using this to kind of like understand um, how people, how to connect with an audience and how to actually move them along their customer journey. But basically we're reaching them at a high, at a, at a broad level. We may again be, touch them one time and there we're suddenly again known by them. They may do some research and kind of, again, learn a little bit more about us and a little bit more about what we do and why we may be an expert in what we do. And then again, they're kind of informing themselves before they may make a purchase or may again, convert in some capacity. And then afterwards, that's when we want to keep them engaged and keep them interacting with us in different ways. And as a marketer, understanding these different stages gives us a lot of different tools that we can use to communicate with an audience and understand how to take somebody from problem aware to solution aware, or again, interest aware to um, again, something in that interest aware and really be able to kind of walk them through that process and educate and inform them along the way and also keep them engaged afterwards, which we'll talk about a little bit more later. But one of the biggest challenges right now in marketing is attention is hard to earn and even harder to maintain. And so what is kind of unique about this is the space we're in, there's a lot of it. Again, it's a battle for attention and eyeballs. It always has been, but it's more intense now than ever has been in the past. And because we have so many other options, it makes life kind of exciting. So context, this is the awkward part. And Chelsea went through a lot of this, so I'm just going to skip, skip parts of this. Um, this is, again, about me. This is my son and my wife and son, Anastasia, in August. This is when all of you guys are saying, ooh, ah, um, isn't that cute in the background? So you don't, I don't have to hear it, but I know it's happening. Um, I've worked in marketing for about 14 years and really enjoy it. I got started in marketing, uh, managing a running shoe store while I was in college. Um, it sounds weird, but we would, again, this was 2008 or so, um, realized, hey, there's a thing to this. Let's try this Facebook thing. Let's have some fun with this and explore. This was kind of the wild, wild west of Facebook. And this was the days where when you posted something, everybody saw it. So basically we would take, again, kind of fun pictures we would take in the store, post them on Facebook and try and sell stuff. Um, this is a picture of my friend Andy, my colleague Andy and myself um, way back when. We would get a shipment of, in this, in this case, it was women's clothing in. I was like, hey, Andy, toss these shorts on, toss his shirt on. We're going to take a photo. And he's like, Robbie, this is this women's stuff. And I was like, and it's for Facebook. It's cool. And we would post it on, post it online. Um, we would sell through a pallet of clothing before it ever hit the sales floor. And we realized we had something going on. So again, this was kind of the early days, the wild, wild west days of social. We got to really kind of explore a lot of spaces and do a lot of fun things in. And then ended up doing that for a few businesses, started a business with some other people. And then when my wife finished her PhD, I moved to, we moved to Greenville, South Carolina, where we live now. I was a director of social at Clemson University. And then I l left to lead, um, lead marketing for a large e-commerce organization before starting my business and starting to teach. So a little bit about me, the context and guys, I know this is a webinar, but can I see some, can I see some hot hots in the chats? I just showed a picture of myself cross-dressing casually. How many other people get that in a webinar? Try to have some fun. Again, like Chelsea said, I've got to work with a lot of really cool brands over the years and feel really lucky every time I think about that. And again, get it, have some fun, tell some cool stories. But one of the things that, yes, yes, Paul, looking good too. I know it. <laughs> Try to have some fun. Guys. So when, it's a Wednesday. It's like halfway through the week on the East Coast. It's kind of rainy. So, but high level view of, of marketing and where we're at now. And I talk about marketing because when I say everybody's in marketing, this is the way that the world is working. Like we're not competing. Marketing is not just 
the way we interact with brands interacting with people. It's the way that we're interacting with brands and the brands are interacting with us. But it's a really unique space because a lot of forces are at play right now that we may not necessarily recognize. I kind of want to do a high level view of that so we can dive into this. So understanding at a high level, the four forces that are really impacting this fragmentation, democratization, disintermediation, and differentiation. And we'll get into why this is important for podcasting soon, and then we'll dive into some nuts and bolts. The fragmentation, this is where the media landscape is splitting right now. We've had so much change in the last 10, 15 years, and what makes it unique is Beverly Hills Hillbillies, after six weeks of being on, on air, had 60 million weekly viewers. Mad Men, the finale, after seven years, had 3.3 million viewers of a finale that has months and, again, lots of attention placed into that, again, that rollout. But what makes it unique is we have so many more options now that we're probably never going to have another Beverly Hills Hillbillies because things have become so fragmented. And the way we consume content and media has changed so much. The democratization has happened in the way that we can produce and create just about anything and share it with the world. Like you guys see this through, again, books through Lulu. But again, a lot of different things are available now that weren't available in the past. Like there are four, over 4 million different podcasts produced and created. That's not just episodes. That's different podcasts. Most of those don't go that long. A lot of these are small projects that don't last very long. But 4 million different people or different groups have started this. And the average person that listens to podcasts listens to nine every week. That's a lot of, again, kind of an open, open audience for attention that, again, can engage with a topic and get really narrow in the focus and get really, really deep into a topic and really love it and really get excited about it. So there's so much, again, opportunity there because we suddenly have the tools we need and the barriers to entry are so much lower than they have been in the past. You don't have to be picked you get to pick yourself. And then again, like I said earlier, the democratization of this has happened where we've disintermediated where a traditional, again, business process would have to go through producer, wholesaler, retailer, and consumer. This is the way a lot of media is changing too. So where so many businesses right now are looking at like direct to consumer relationships because they have a, again, a more direct path to their customer. The, this is the way that we can communicate directly with our audience now where we don't necessarily have any gatekeepers. And that disintermediation has really made this unique and different because suddenly I can go from, again, being the, the producer of something to connecting with an audience really easily without a lot of infrastructure and without a lot of investment. We see groups doing this all over the place, especially, again, here where, like, Nike decided to pull out of 50% of their retail locations to, again, drive more direct to consumer sales. This was their direct to consumer offense in 2017. It was a really unique opportunity for them, but they've grown quite a bit since. But basically they're gonna pull out, a, they said they were gonna pull out 50% of their retail channel stores and focus more attention on direct to consumer because there's a lot more profitability without a loss of margin and also a lot, lot higher lifetime value. So I know I'm, I'm skipping pretty fast through this part because I wanna have time to like talk shop um, and if you guys want to circle back to any of this too, we can talk about this a little bit more after if, if you want to too. Like I mentioned earlier, like I joke that like my love language is talking about marketing. So um, I, love, I love this stuff. Um, so one area where this makes podcasting kind of unique and different is the ability to reach and connect with an audience. So what's happening, what, what happens with, a podcast versus a lot of other channels and mediums is the differentiation that you can create. And what makes it so, so unique and different is where a lot of other marketing channels or a lot of other channels you may use to reach an audience, like, like social, like email, like a lot, a lot of different places, you can only go so deep. You can, again, connect with them in a lot of meaningful ways. But I always think about most like social, it's like water skiing. You're, again, kind of on the surface level, but you want to bring people into a deeper relationship. Like podcasting feels like scuba diving. And it's a really unique medium that we haven't had as much access to in the past. And really there's no, 
established precedents for what is like the gold standard of the space and medium looks like yet because it's still being established. It's still relatively new and we're still kind of exploring a lot of those opportunities and a lot of innovations happening right now. But the level of the level of deep dive you can go with a podcast audience is incredible because they're connecting with you, they're connecting, you're connecting with them and that level of interaction and rapport that's at, there from the very beginning is really impa- impa- impactful. And yes, it is goofy water skiing. Um, yes, goofy water skiing. I'm trying to have some, trying to have again some fun here. Um, trying to make it make it make it light. Um, so again, I know I wanted to go through that pretty pretty fast, but again, I love that context piece. Like I again said, the talk about marketing is one of my favorite things and giving that context, I always think really helps to kind of frame why this is a unique opportunity because we have a lot of resources, a lot of disposals, a lot of things at our disposal that haven't always been there in the past. And Kathy, where we talked about, again, mediums for communication, I think that's unique. If I go back again, we can just go deeper than other methods. So, we'll talk through kind of like where this fits into the hierarchy of how you can look at a podcast relative to other channels. But I think that the level of deep dive we can get into with a podcast is really unique and different because we can develop such a strong connection with our audience. And you start to sense that, again, you know a podcaster when you're listening to their podcast, but also, um, Again, that podcaster sometimes will feel like they're getting to know those that audience really well too. So getting started. And I'm gonna kind of follow the trajectory of um, a recent project I've been working on of the Content Community and Commerce podcast. This is a podcast that actually started fairly recently um, with a collaborator named Tim Lowry. Um, we've both been building content for different brands for a long time. Again, working with e-commerce brands mainly. Um, Tim focuses on SEO. My business focuses on email and email marketing strategy. And we always joke that email marketing plus SEO is kind of like a one plus one equals four relationship because both complement each other really well. And if you're doing one well, it supplements how you can perform on the others. So the content piece really, again, supplements a lot of the other areas of marketing, and you can use that to build on top of what you're already doing. Um, and that's why it seems like it made sense. Also, Tim is Irish. He has like a really smooth Irish accent. It just makes me, it makes it sound way smarter than it really than it may necessarily be just because it, he, he sounds so good. And I'll, again, kind of coasting off that myself too. So understanding podcast we're going to go through a few steps and kind of like understanding what are what we're going to do to create our podcast but no first thing what is your goal for the podcast are you using this as a way to grow your audience grow your average order value or grow your uh, number of lifetime purchases i always like to come back to these three areas because these are what i always like to refer to or again look at as growth multipliers when we can double any one of those three, we can double the value of our business. And when we do that, it, when we look at those in individual lens, it gives us a lot of power as marketers or as, again, business owners to think about, to think strategically, hey, I may not necessarily have to bring in a ton of new customers, but if I pull different levers in my marketing or how I connect with an audience, I can do a lot more impactful work with a lot, again, less stress and always acquiring. So I think most marketers always think about, hey, if I'm going to grow a business, I think about number of customers. And that gets a lot of attention and a lot of focus, but it isn't always the right area to focus on for your marketing because you may be, again, leaving other options on the table. So we have, again, average order value. If we can increase that, if we can double that, we're going to, again, double the value of the business. And then if we can increase the number of purchases somebody's going to make, that's also going to double that, double that value. So we see different ways we can do different things in our marketing and ways we can take advantage of this. 
And then where podcasting can really fit in is yes, it can expand the number of customers we're going to reach. And we'll talk through some different ways to grow a podcast and an audience through that. But also it can grow the business in terms of like, hey, can we keep people engaged when in between books? Can we keep them engaged again year round and in in perpetuum to keep them excited about what, what we're doing and connected with your business, your your content and how you're adding value in the world. And then again, increasing average order value is how can we increase the amount people are purchasing? Like if they're purchasing for a gift, like are they purchasing multiple gifts from multiple people? And how can we keep them again, moving, pulling different levers to grow that business? And when we think about this strategically, it just gives us a lot of opportunity. So I really always try and get to this point of which of these is going to lead to. And depending on what your goal is, this is where you can look at like, hey, do I want to engage my existing audience in more deeper and more meaningful ways? Do I want to work to increase the number of audience members I have? Or do I want to get them to, again, possibly purchase even more? And then, Kathy, this is where I think this is going to fit into your question earlier of like, how is podcasting a better method than other possible communication methods? What podcasting does is allows us to connect in a different way. And not every audience member is necessarily created equal. Not every social follower is created equal and not every member of our audience or customers are created equal. So this is what I would like to call an audience hierarchy where we can understand, hey, what is the path someone may take to uh, engage with your business or brand and then eventually move to move from a engaged individual to a purchaser and from a purchaser to a repeat purchaser. So how do we move our good customers into being great customers? And with each of these steps, we generally get more control over that relationship. We also, um, those individuals become generally more profitable. So for a business, yes, somebody may come in at the top of the funnel as a social follower. They may engage with our social content. And if, if, the, if that's good enough, we may be able to get them to, our, to become a podcast subscriber or engage with our podcast. And then if they want to make sure they don't miss a podcast, maybe they subscribe to our email just so again, we can send them a notification or communicate with them in, in different and unique ways. If we can get them to subscribe to both and, and be engaged with both, we may be able to get them to purchase. And if we can get them to purchase, um, we can hopefully keep them engaged and create a repeat customer. And then event, again, eventually a re engaged repeat customer. So we have them again, purchasing and excited when we have a new release, excited when we're doing something different or something new. And this is what allows us to really think strategically about, hey, how do I take that per individual and communicate with them in different ways along that journey to make sure that we can move them up in that, this hierarchy intentionally. Also, a social follower, we don't necessarily always have the same level of control there. I, again, I showed you, again, pictures from way back in the day when social was the wild, wild west. You posted, everybody saw everything you saw everything you posted. It was great. It was, it was amazing. Over time, based on an algorithm, based on algorithms and monetization of, of platforms, you don't have that same, we don't have the same control over anymore. So we're not necessarily always building a house on owned land there. So we have a lot more control when we can move somebody from a podcast subscriber to an email subscriber where we own more of that relationship. Holly, thank you very much. And then we can keep moving them up and up and up this hierarchy. And this is where we can start to get intentional about how we do that. And what podcasting does in such a powerful way is it really like it's glue in that relationship. So when they become a purchaser, we want to make them an engaged, engaged purchaser and then ideally to drive a repeat. So when we think about that hierarchy, that's going to be different for each individual business but how we can think about this strategically and how we want to move them up that ladder and up that journey is really helpful in, in the way we can look at this as a look at podcasting as a tool to facilitate that. So point number two, we've got our goal. We know what we want to do. Where do we, where are we going to focus? This is where, it's easy to get excited about a lot of different things. 
And where this is going to be most successful is if you're getting narrow from out of from out of the gate. And people, everybody's always kind of it's it feels like you're pigeonholing yourself. And I've been through this experience by, myself with content community commerce. We didn't want to just pigeon ourselves into like one specific narrow, narrow, narrow category. But the more narrow we can get, the more we can really own and own and understand who our audience is. If we can really, again, create a passionate, loyal audience early on, that's what's going to help us really own that relationship. So getting really narrow. So like think the riches are in the niches and really get focused on the, the edge, the edge cases. I always joke like, Hey, what are the podcasts that you listen to? What are the weird ones? Like go weird and understand how they're connecting in different ways. Like, like again, joke, like, like podcast about people reenacting Game of Thrones episodes with cats. Like this could be, this could be a thing. There's 4 million different podcasts out there. They're all focusing on something completely different. So getting narrow in that focus early on is going to help you again, understand your audience and reach that audience in a meaningful way. Um, it's also going to help them go really deep, really fast. So this may not necessarily be the biggest audience possible, but it's the right audience. So think, again, you're not always focusing on the right audience. You're thinking, you're not always focusing on the, the bright audience. You're focusing on the right audience. Um, the need to, yeah, I think we'll, we'll share an email address after this too. Um, So step three, plant your flag in what your format is going to be. I think this part is really fun because there's so many different formats. And again, there's no perfect like structure and format of a podcast, but basically how are you going to structure things out of the gate is going to help you understand what do I even need? So is it going to be an interview podcast? This is where you may be interviewing different people. You may have a group interviewing different people, but rotating guests. This is like the how I built this podcast. Conversations with individuals and around their stories and different things. You may have a conversation with regular hosts, like the Acquired Podcast, which is like a really fascinating podcast. Um, they have two hosts and they just go really, they dive deep into a topic. Or you may just have a really deep dive into a topic with one individual having a, forming a narrative and like a hardcore history by Dan Carlin. Um, those are all different ways that you can structure your podcast, but understanding out of the gate what you want to be looking at and how you want to be structuring that is going to help to say, hey, if I want to have, again, rotating guests, I may need to line up those guests. Or if I have a regular co-host, I may need to, we may need to make sure that both of those topics, that we're going to have aligned topics and things to talk about every time. Or if I want to go deep into a topic, do I, do I have enough to talk about each time? And all of these offer advantages and disadvantages. Like number one, this has a great way to grow audiences because individuals are going to share that with their own audience. And again, if you're celebrating them, they're going to celebrate you too. But the logistics and planning of this one are a little bit more challenging where if you, the fewer people involved, the easier it's going to be to plan and execute. And you, again, putting those together and making those work are always helpful. Also, I haven't, asked you guys as much right here, but what are some of the podcasts you all listen to? Like, what are some of your go-tos? I want to see like, what are some of the, the more, again, topics you're passionate about focused? Does anybody listen to any like just fun stuff? Um, I know there's probably like one or two cr true crime people. Cause like everybody's into true crime and some, like there's so many people into true crime pro podcasts. Um, but what are some of the ones you guys have, you guys listen to on a regular basis? Like put it in the chat. Um, and we can compare notes later. Um, so for content community commerce, we have two co-hosts. We got NPR, Radio Lab, Hidden Brain, Paul. Hidden, yeah, so good. Like those are just very, very like. Well, those will suck you in if you guys haven't listened to Hidden Brain. That's like one of my favorites personally. But Radio Lab is really good. Um, Ride and Normal Gossip, Lauren, that's awesome. Um, Michael Hyatt, Greg McEwen, um, solid. I was, 
my MBA students are always talking about theirs and theirs are all over the place. They're like some business focused and then like, like call her daddy. And like, I just always hear about all the, all of them crime junkie. Yeah. So these, so everybody here has like some different, different, again, buckets are they're interested in and which makes these exciting because you can connect with people on such a different, deeper level. Quirks and quanks. Um, Jay Shetty. Yeah, these are awesome guys. Again, this is a pretty, again, ambitious, high achieving group. So I, I figure we're, we're gonna have a few podcast listeners in here. Um, the last podcast on what? Um, yeah, keep putting them in there. These are fascinating. I, I'm, again, a big fan of all of these. So um, and, and they're, they're just fun to learn about what you guys are interested in. Um, but this is where, again, we want to pick that topic. We decided to go with a conversation with regular hosts. It doesn't offer as much upside in terms of like growth, it, the way that uh, like the interview with rotating guests would, but it gives us a way to make that consistent and dive into topics that are, that are valuable for both audiences. Um, and then the research involved with a deep dive into a topic it's like hardcore history. If any of you guys ever listened to that, those are so long, um, but really impactful. And Lavina, if you haven't listened to any, we have a list of awesome ones in the chat here. So like, just pick one and roll with it. Um, but the more you can start to like dive into the medium, the more you're going to be able to understand it. And I always do recommend to like finding some that are in different categories that you may not necessarily always expect. Those are going to be helpful and finding different ways of interacting like business podcasts are a certain way. Comedy podcasts are a certain way too. So when you can listen to a different, a broad swath of them, you're going to have different examples that you can pull from that may not be happening in that vertical that you're focusing on too. The next piece, this is where everybody gets really into the weeds really fast. And I, I'm always like, oh, okay, it's super easy to nerd out on like what technology are we going to be using? What are we going to be doing? This is where like, again, just start something. Don't get too detailed. Don't get too into the weeds. Like get a microphone. Yes. Like it's like generally use like a blue daddy mic. This is like a hundred dollars. Um, if I need to upgrade, I can have a, a sound, uh, a sound shield. This is to prevent too much floor noise. That's again, a huge help to make life a lot easier for me. And again, preventing other things happening. I work in a, like a, like an office building. Um, so there's like, sometimes floor noise. There's not a ton of noise in here, but like anything can, uh, again, a sensitive mic, you can dial down the dial down all of the, all of the different, um, functions on it. But, um, the, I guess dialing down the gain around like what it's going to pick up, you can dial that in, but there's always going to be something. So this really helps me. Um, also if you're recording an audiobook, those sound shields are a, are pretty much a gift because you prevent any other things from coming in and then starting to record you're going to record if you're doing a low frills with guests maybe zoom not the highest audio quality on the other side but it's really easy everybody's been on a zoom call it's pretty simple you may use audacity if you're doing it solo the audacity is just a, a service it's free and you can essentially just record onto your computer gives you a nice wavelength that you can listen to, make sure you don't have too much feedback or getting any, any weird sounds. And that makes it pretty simple. And also you can export in a wave format or an MP3 and then recording. If you have guests and video Riverside is a nice option because that's like meant for both. So recording guests and again, merging those audio files together is really nice and seamless. Then editing different people can use different tools like GarageBand is free. There's a lot of free tools out there and deciding on what's going to be good for you is going to be helpful. One of the tools we use is Descript. Um, it actually does do some audio editing like with AI, basically just cleaning up any, any noise or background noise um, that may be happening. So it, it makes that process a lot more smooth. We'll cut out a lot of filler words and that makes it really easy. I think it's like $10 a month. Um, but it's a really easy process. And if you wanted to cut and slice the video, your audio files, it's a really easy tool to use also. Um, or one thing a lot of people will do is hire an editor. So we 
like this is what we use too, is we have an editor who we send this over to to edit those individual files and it makes it just a lot easier. If that's not something that brings you joy or makes you happy, like you can outsource that part of it, which is gonna make that a lot easier for you. So hiring an editor, this can be like $50 to like $1,000 for like higher production quality. And that's basically gonna be your choice. Like out of the gate, probably starting in the $50 range and then moving up as time goes on. But that's one of those things. We, again, our editor is fantastic, turns those around fast. We upload them to a, a box folder. Um, box is just like Dropbox or any other file sharing service. And he edits them, sends them back over. We have that, we take those files and we use them. Um, we upload them to Libsyn and that takes care of most of it for us. Um, but this is a piece where just don't get too like precious with it. Um, this is something that will evolve if you get into this rhythm and it's, you can always upgrade, you can always improve. It's not gonna be a deal breaker if it's not perfect out of the gate. Then this next piece, start building a drumbeat. This is where you wanna build, start building consistency. Think consistency over intensity. So again, I always used to joke, like everybody used to, again, as director of social for Clemson University, we used to help different groups around campus and like the entire university with strategy. We had to help them, again, understand the strategy. Everybody always, again, came out with a lot of momentum early, excited. They were like just going out guns blazing, like having fun. Um, and then they start to slow down because it's hard and it's hard to maintain that same love, same cadence and same momentum. And thinking, hey, how do we slow that down a little bit? How do we build consistency and build rep rep repeatability into the system? So when we can start to do that, it makes it easier. And as opposed to, again, doing something and create, reinventing the wheel every week, we can start to, again, build it into a process where we don't publish because it's like absolutely perfect. We publish because it's Thursday. And that's where, again, we want to build consistency early on and build a consistent drumbeat. So the, your audience knows what to expect and what to engage, what they're going to be able to engage in, and making that predictable content predictable and consistent is going to make it easier to kind of habituate your audience into expecting that on a regular cadence. And again, when they're looking for that, they may be listening to a certain number of podcasts a week. They may be listening to these podcasts every single week. So you, once you build yourself into their consistent rotation, you want to be filling that spot every time because again, if they find a new podcast that would fill that void if you're gone. Um, again, attention's hard to earn, harder to maintain, and you want to maintain that attention. Um, and then this is where the letting perfect get in the way of done, like your intro, your art, your audio, every th your recorded voice. I hate my voice recording. I hate the way it sounds. I, I feel like I'm like, like a 17 year old when I hear myself talk, but it's not gonna be perfect. Have, have fun with it. If you're not embarrassed by what you're doing when you start a year from then, you're not doing it right. You're not evolving. You should be, you should be able to poke holes in the work you were doing in the past. And that's what makes it really great is because you're going to learn and evolve constantly. So thinking about that is like, don't get precious, get consistent. And then do the unsexy work of planning. So this can take any form you want it to take. Get a Google spreadsheet, get a, again, a whiteboard, Go through 10 topics, 15 topics, and really plan out those episodes. You can, again, get serious about how, when you want those to publish and how you want those to feel, but make sure that you can have a good bucket of these on the calendar and ready to go because you don't want to have to be thinking about these all the time. Spend some time getting really intentional about what episodes to put in where and plan those out, put them on the calendar, and again, get those executed because 95% of podcasts don't make it to episode eight, like that pro those projects start to slowly die after time and you don't want to be part of that part of that group. So again, planning this out early, build it onto your calendar and build that system. It is, and make it as, as easy as possible. Don't put too many, too many layers to it, make your life easy. So thinking through that as a way of, again, building into that, building into that rhythm that you'll eventually get into. And if you don't hit it, if something falls through, don't be hard on yourself. It's going to happen to everybody. It happens. It does happen. You may bank a few podcast episodes to, to loop in later 
and like that may be a good way to do this or the audio quality may not be where you wanted it to be for an episode you may have to re-record these things happen they're all going to be learning events that you're going to get better and better over time the next thing soak up feedback and start to get some non-obvious re responses so this is where when somebody listens to your podcast, ask them what they liked, ask them what you, they didn't like, ask them, Hey, how long was it too much banter at the beginning? Was it not enough banter at the beginning? Do you sound like, do we sound like robots? Do we sound like one person dominating the conversation? What does that, what does that look like? What kind of questions do I need to ask? How do I need to approach that? Because early on, you're not going to have the same metrics and the same high level volume that you would later, you will later on. But early on, this is where you can be, refining quickly, asking questions. Again, it may be only your like your friends and family and follow and like close followers that are listening to it early on, but this is where you can really gain a lot of insight fast. And then you'll start to see some other things come through. Like you may not see like hockey stick growth in terms of numbers, but you may see, hey, somebody reaching out on LinkedIn where, hey, I noticed your podcast and I wanted to see if you'd be willing to to jump on a 15 minute call. Um this is where you can start to get some kind of like I always call them non-obvious success indicators early on where you can see if you're doing well and if you're perform how well you're performing. So making sure that you're, you're not only holding yourself to the standard of like, Hey, I want to have like a million downloads or a million listens, get some other, you're going to have some other feedback loops and some other, again, listening posts going on all the time. So being able to have those, have those other non-obvious indicators of success and kind of banking on those is going to be helpful in kind of keeping that momentum and keeping that excitement going and also smoothing off the rough edges early too. And guys, I apologize. I'm going to go back. I wasn't looking at the Q&A. I was only looking at the chat. Um, and from Kay, we'll share, we'll share um, podcast editor Jim Mann is who we use. Um, I'm going, I'm going to go through these really fast. Um, okay. Mixed formats. Podcast. Yeah. And K it's possible to mix formats. Totally fine. That's like, again, there's no set behavior here. So anybody can do anything all the time. We'll go back to, I'll actually probably dive back into these questions at the end. Like, so we can go to Q and a and have some fun with those. And then if you guys stay long enough, we can maybe sing karaoke. Who knows? Um, but just for fun, what are your guys' karaoke songs? I'm going to put you guys on the spot here. I'm not the only one. Um, it's a tough question. I know, I know. But the next piece, use the whole buffalo. Um, Donna, how long does the podcast need to be? This can be long or short. We, like, like for, for um, content community commerce, we settled on 30 minutes. 30 minutes is a good amount of time. There are podcasts that are long and short that people really love. And basically like people talk about like the amount of attention people may have. Um, Paul's, is, Paul's karaoke song is Sweet Child of Mine. Um, talking about attention lengths, I'm getting distracted by the chat. But people talk about attention lengths people may have. People will listen to a long podcast. If it's good, they will listen. One of the most successful podcasts on the internet right now is the Joe Rogan podcast, and that's like three hours long. Those are long. Those are epic. The hardcore history that I mentioned earlier, those are, can be three to four hours long. Those are extremely long. Those are ways, like, if it's good and connects with an audience, there's no, like, minimum or maximum length you can reach. You could have three, epi like, three episodes of a very, very, very long podcast. So that's where you need to, you need to understand, hey, if it's good – people will listen. Don't worry about the dial in on a specific length you want to be shooting for. Don't, it doesn't have to be perfect on either side. And if we try and experiment with a longer form podcast and it works, like understand there's no sacred cows. We can, ex we can explore and experiment and get feedback hopefully in real time too. But once we can communicate that, that once we have some insights and data around like what's working, what's not, we can adjust and change. Hopefully that, that was helpful. Um, and then number six, like start to use the whole Buffalo. So this is where use this to part, start informing other areas of your marketing. So for podcast, that transcription of a podcast 
is probably going to turn into a really easy blog post that you could clean up and, and publish. And also with those long tail keywords in there that you've touched on during the course of that time, it's going to make the Google gods very happy. So again, in terms of organic traffic, that may be a helpful tool. Also, you can chop and slice different pieces of that podcast and fold it into your other areas of marketing. I bet a clip from that may make a great soundbite for a social post. I bet, again, a lot of different areas would turn into good insights later. We use a service called CapShow. In ours, that helps to take our transcript and turn it into some like great descriptions and some great snippets that we may want to use later on in Hygiene Hub and Hero content. So where we talk about the Hygiene Hub and Hero model, I like to always think of like Game of Thrones doing a great job of this or any HBO show does a great job of this. They have their hub content they release every week. They have hygiene content that they're going to do to release in between. So like after every show, they're going to have like a uh, recap of what happened. They're going to have teasers for the next episode. They're going to have other content that keeps people engaged during the course of that week. And then they're going to release a new episode. The hub content gives it, the hub episodes give a nice skeleton for everything else they're doing. The hygiene content keeps people engaged over the course of a window of time that in between those. And then the hero content, maybe the season finale or a large, again, event, that's going to be something they can't necessarily scale all the time, but they really build that out and blow out everything they can to make that a large event. So where you could look at this from the term of publishing is hero content, maybe a book release where you have hub content you're introducing every week on a consistent cadence to keep people engaged. You may chop that hub content into hygiene content to like have snippets or different clips from that to use. And then when you're leading into that large book release or large book launch, that's when you're, again, that's your hero content. You want to be building that up. You want to be blowing out, pulling out all the stops and you want to make that great. So that's where you can keep people engaged all in the course of that time and also be excited and ready to go and ready to purchase once you may have a book release or may have a new project you're introducing. So that's where there's lots of opportunity there and where following that model really helps. Game of Thrones is just like one example of this, but I like to use examples people might get. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. And then one other thing is the, one of the last things is join other podcasts. It gets on other podcasts. It's a really easy way to grow your audience. It's great reps in terms of learning for your podcast too. And then it's always a great way to sell more books. Every one of those different podcasts you may visit or be a guest on has an audience. We talked about the format. Some people love that, again, growth format of having different rotating guests. You can be one of those guests and really use that as a tool to grow your audience. Um, I've been lucky enough to be on a good number of different podcasts over the years, like a good number. But like this is where you can start to get good reps, get good understanding, and just hopefully have some fun. But it also helps to, again, build your audience because – if somebody really hears, hears one of those podcasts and it resonates, those, they're, they're probably going to reach out or they're probably going to go look you up or you're going to be in their show notes and they're going to look up your podcast. So it's a really easy way to kind of piggyback on top of that, especially for the publishing industry and books. Like this is a really great way to sell more books because you're sharing ideas. You're sharing ideas. You're introducing new audience to your ideas. And if they're really, again, you strike a chord or strike a nerve, that's when they're going to want to go much deeper. And that, allows you to do that. And also the credibility and trust that that podcaster has built is going to transfer over to you because again, they trust them enough to be discerning on who they're going to invite onto their podcast. So if you're one of those guests, skill by association. And the last thing is like, just have fun and be human. Like this is where if you don't enjoy it, you're probably not going to be able to keep the process going that long. So have some fun with it. Um, like, we joke about karaoke. There's some karaoke that happens in the middle of our podcast sometimes. And if I can, like, enjoy, like, we just try and have some fun with it. Um, have fun with the process. It's never going to have, like, again, you're never going to keep continue it if you're not having fun. And then the more human you are, the better. So, like, being able to kind of, like, unpack the, like, lots of different things here is what's going to make these great. And where we're living in a world with a lot more content that's going to be consistently produced, what decommoditizes that content is a level of humanity and human interaction we can provide. And that's what's really a differentiator for so many creators here is 
the way that we can build a human connection is going to be powerful when we can really, again, go one layer deeper to make that really powerful human connection. Yeah, Lauren, like you see this, you see this nice, again, ex the process. Hey, this is how we discover new people on podcasts. There's no the podcast. There's no like feed like there's on a social network. So this is how people get discovered. So one area that I always fall back to, and this is kind of one of the biggest themes for like marketing rhythm and what we do as a business is we're never going to outscale the giants in our space, but we can out human them. And this is kind of one of the goals for the podcast is how do we really differentiate ourselves and how do we make our business or our, the work we do different? Everybody's going to have more content. There's going to be more content produced this year than there was last year. And the last year there was the year before, but how do we make what we do different and how do we keep that, maintain that connection over time when eyeballs and attention are more difficult than ever. And we, the way we do that is through content and through connection. And the, when we can be human and we can out human our competitors or the larger players in our space, that's when we can really win because we suddenly take ourselves out of that commodity space. We're no longer a commodity. We are a value added provider. And that's what people really want to connect with. That's what people really want to, again, support. And that's what gets people excited and again, excited to support and also engage with. So that's where, there's so much value in being able to have that human relationship and human connection there. I know I went a little bit over on time, but wanted to dive into the Q and a piece and we'll start to have some fun there. Um, again, this is Chelsea, you, you guys, you guys were brave enough to give me the, give me the, give me the floor and it's hard to compress a lot into a little bit of time. And I did, I did my best, but went a little bit over. No, you did a great job and you put your contact information there. So flood him, spam him <laughs> with all your questions that we won't get to here. Please, if you do have questions, drop them in the Q&A tab. Um, but yeah, what I love about what you said, I love many things about what you said, and I appreciate the humor. And I know it's hard when you're making jokes and you hear no feedback. So shout out <laughs> to everybody who put a ha ha in the chat. Uh, but Thank you I all really, for that. Thank you all for yeah. that. But I love the idea of creating the podcast, which can turn into social media posts, which turn into a blog post, which, you know, after you see those themes develop, can turn into your next book, that can turn into podcast content. So I love that it can just be this great uh, process that can kind of feed into all these other ways to grow your business. Um, I do have a question for you, Robbie, before we dive into the official Q&A tab. But do you have any recommendations or your, from your experience, how long should someone give themselves to research, plan, and launch a podcast? Or is it just kind of different for every type? So it's going to be different for everybody based on like what your podcast topic is. I, because there's so many variables and there's so many things that you can get hung up on, I think that like starting small early and just to, again, get a sense for things, like if you're planning and doing all that pre-work ahead of time, it's, it's wonderful and amazing to have and going to help the, with the long-term long -term growth, ideally. But even just getting into the process of understanding like what works and what doesn't, like that's where when you ha don't have much of an audience, you can do the kissing frogs and you can learn a lot faster. And getting those reps is helpful because you understand what works and what doesn't, when you can make different jokes and when you can, like when you shouldn't. So those are things that you are going to be able to intuit over time. That's where it's going to be different depending on that, depending on what podcast and what topic you're focusing on. Um, sometimes how snarky is your audience? Like if you have an audience where they are looking for like, it's really like expertise. Um, my wife is a PhD. She's an academic. They have a pretty snarky group there. So you want to have everything very buttoned up out of the gate. But if it's a little bit more like free form, then that's when it can be a little bit more fun. And honestly, like when we talked about being more human than the competition, like knowing that you're going out of the gate, like, hey, I am going to totally screw this up. This is going to be possibly really embarrassing a year from now. And that's the way it should be. But like, that's where you're kind of like being open and honest and vulnerable there, which is really hard to do, but really is how we build connection as humans. Yeah, throwing in the peppering in the karaoke lightly once you have an idea of who your audience is and, and how they will respond to that. 
Um, and so uh, first question we've got is, well, you've been answering them throughout, but Veronica is asking, what platform can we use to market the podcast? So what, depending on what chan social channels you're using on a regular basis, that's where you can market it through your, your channel. So market it through your social channels like LinkedIn, Instagram, or other channels. And then if you have an email list, that's a direct connection. And then this gives you an at-bat every week or every time you publish to communicate with your email audience. So it's a really nice way of building consistency and like I would say re repeatability into your, into your systems where you can build that as a, as a drumbeat or as a piece of hub content on a regular basis. So distributing that, con that podcast through a few different channels is going to be super helpful. Um, one of the groups that I always think doing a really great job of this, like I think the Rich Roll podcast has like some of the best Instagram videos. They take clips from their podcast, the podcast recording and post them onto Instagram. That's a great way for them to grow and people to engage with it beyond just that podcast. But also like the, finding different examples of different groups that do it well. And then again, through from an email list perspective, it just gives you an easy way to make, to, to communicate with your list, which is again, a valuable resource on its own. Yeah. And again, I love the parallels between podcasting and publishing a book because we always tell people, if you want to know how to write a book or publish a book, well, look at books that you like and people who have done it well and see what you can take from them. So that was a great answer. And thank you for that question, Veronica. Uh, Madhu has a good question. So you're saying to start, do you recommend doing live or pre-recorded podcasts? I think pre-recorded. Live, it, to some extent, unless you have an audience that's ready to ready to listen in the in like a live format, it's really hard to build momentum. Um, if you want to record live, some people will like have people like join the Zoom call, but not be get, be guests. Um, some people like that if you have like a really intimate community and you have like some VIPs, you can add them as a guest for those podcast podcast recordings where they can get to be part of that interview you may be doing. But generally recording ahead of time and then publishing afterwards will allow you to get into a consistent cadence, will allow you to button things up a little bit more. And then you can sprinkle those live those live podcast episodes in on top of things and communicate that with your audience at ahead of time too. So you will have more people tuning in during those times. Perfect. And thank you for that question. All right. And Vanita is asking, what are some good books for podcasting? Some good books for podcasting. Um, I'm trying to think, honestly, this is one area where I haven't dove into as much book content. As, as you much should write as, like, one, Robbie. I think that's the answer I, here. I, this is, you got again, again, I, I, I know I have that on the, on the calendar soon enough. I'm, I'm, I've been, been gradually pulled in that direction. So it's on the radar. Um, I was actually part of a project that we did with the, the most amazing marketing book ever. There's a chapter on po podcasting in there too. Um, that was, um, that's one. And a lot of, yeah, I wish I could offer some more resources. A lot of great resources, Cap Show, Riverside, a lot of the podcast businesses are actually great resources and great tools for in finding insights and information on how to operate and run a podcast. Their goal is to grow podcasting. So that's kind of one of the ways they do this. And I'm not going to lie. I know the Lulu team, you guys are always working on awesome rock star content. So I'm sure there's going to be something there. Soon. True. Yeah. And also, if you have, uh, whenever you get your book together, Robbie, I know some people that can help you publish it. So keep us, keep us in mind. <laughs> keep us in the loop. All right. Well, I will do a uh, last call for questions um, since we are at the hour, at the top of the hour now. Um, again, you can reach out to Robbie and follow him on social media. And thank you so much for joining us. So last call for questions. Speak now or I guess just email Robbie privately. He put his, he's brave enough to put his information up there. So I just want to thank everyone so much for joining us today. Thank you for spending time with us. I hope this was enlightening and you know now how you can start a podcast and you're inspired to do so. So Robbie, is there anything else that you would like the people to know before we let you go? No, it's, this has been great. Thank you all so much. And he's leaving, leaving on that midnight train, Joe. Leaving on the midnight train, Joe, Joe. All right, and that is time. So we're going to go ahead and sign off. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you.
thank you so much for that. I see some people asking for a replay option. Yes, you can replay what you just heard as many times as you want. Um, it will be on our YouTube channel within about 24 hours. You will also be getting an email with the recording. <laughs> so definitely tune in for that. Thank you, Robbie, for uh, ending us on that literal high note. Um, and we are so glad that you spent time with us today. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I hope you all have a fantastic afternoon, a wonderful Wednesday. Um, and you as well, Robbie. And we will see you all next time. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you all.